Hey guys, how are we all doing? It's Henry here for Run It Once. And in today's video, I'm going to be playing some 200 Zoom. Um, it is currently sometime in the morning, around 9, 10 a.m. So we're going to find the 500 Zoom pools closed and consequently players such as Chaps, um, Goose Core and so on and so forth are going to be playing in this pool. So the pool itself is probably going to be, for 200 Zoom itself, extremely solid. My name is Carl's also in the mix. Um... We've just gone, basically we're going to have um, arguably some of the best players in the world in this pool at six max and some weaker regulars who play 200 zoom on a frequent basis. So it's going to probably be the toughest 200 zoom pool we will ever find, but hopefully we will have dotted around some weaker regulars and fish, which means that we will still have a win rate here. But for that reason, um, because we want to play solid and um, not basically give away too much EV, we are going to consequently go ahead and um, probably just play the, the two tables here and go ahead and leave this third one most likely not in use and just use the replayer and basically make sure that we go on with a lot of detail analysis. So we one third the flop here, which seems reasonable. On the turn, we want to have some double barrels. This is decent blocking a jack, but honestly, I prefer to not use this king-queen combo because having the diamond and the club is bad because a lot of his floats may be some kind of king x of diamonds, queen x of clubs. Um, so essentially, this becomes a... When we bow this on the turn, we're going to be blocking um, a decent chunk of hands that can call the flop to fault the turn, such as queen 10 of clubs or king queen, king 10, king 9, king 8 um, of diamond type hands. 6 7 over here is a hand which I will sometimes 3 bet. However, honest, I decided just to not 3 bet at this time. Goose core is probably going to be one of, if not. Yeah, it's going to be one of the strongest players in the pool currently with my name is Carl behind. Um, I just decided to take the more passive option there and just go ahead and pure fold that. I'm not worried about um, folding this sometimes. And essentially, realistically, it's like six, seven of diamonds, button versus under the guns, probably only meant to not be three bet all the time. Um, however, in certain situations, I in this specific spot i will probably sometimes three bet it close to 100 percent, just due to the fact that i believe that with post flop edge and if players are not strong enough that we can push this from a mixed frequency to a pure three bet and pocket tens here this player looks aggressive over a small sample 35 v pip 18 three bet 112 hands um i don't really see four bet get it in being great here i think jacks is sort of going to be the bottom of that value range so tens is going to call and flopping a set Straight off the bat is pretty nice if you ask me. So life's pretty easy in these situations, essentially. Um, so his bet's fine. I expect regs when they do bet to often bet seven here. I guess he's just used a bit bigger. Um, realistically, this could just be a merged range with a lot of hands. I don't think I'm, I need to ever have a raising range in these situations. My bluffs are incentive, like my um, my draws are incentivized to essentially call in position. Um, it just doesn't make too much sense to raise, in my opinion, ever with anything, even like ace queen, just because I sort of struggle to have bluffs is how I view this situation. So I'm going to call here. Hope for a river pair or a brick. Um, so yeah, we basically call or shove here. Honestly, I don't expect there to be too many hands that he will triple barrel as a bluff with. I expect him to just have jacks, kings, and ace, queen off suit all day. Um, but I also feel like when we get to this river here, an eight, nine maybe, um, I feel like a set is just going to be too strong here to be folding. And he probably just has the face rod ace, queen, which he does. That's fine. Um, so I'm just going to call down here without any reads with a set and hope that he has potentially bluffed something along the lines of either gone for too thin with a hand like King Jack or goes ahead and bluffs off something like Queen Jack. Um, I mean, it's probably unlikely though, but we're getting such a sick price on the river with such a good hand that we're not going to fold. One thirding in the top left and I'm going to be checking a lot, probably range three way on this texture. I am definitely just going to fire now. I th there's basically two reasons. Reason one, we have a fish behind. We want to start piling. Reason two, um, I'm actually going to overbet. Um, Ojo is probably the nittiest player I can recall who's a regular that plays in these games. 
his VPIP, his everything is way too low. So checking is just bad and we should just overbet to pile against this player. So I'm just going to now put the money in here very happily, tank for a bit because we will have decisions with other parts of range um, and just hope that, yeah, we're getting in the second nuts here. And okay, sometimes you get a, a pretty big donation. Uh, that's a slightly peculiar line. Okay. So a minute ago, I was talking about sort of donations, not expecting them. Um, that's a pretty big donation. Yeah. This is a more dynamic board texture and is one which I can definitely play as I, be I believe we also need protection. So we could argue for one third. I think this hand specifically does re renders very well to a bigger bet and wants to basically try and pile in as much money before the board gets scary. We can use multiple bet sizings. I just think this hand never wants to check, really. I'm not sure what to do here. And on the turn, six is actually, yes, it's better for villain's range. However, this hand just really needs protection. So I think we just need to keep betting. Um, it, he's going to have hands like jack 10, seven, eight, heart, heart, that we just need to get value from here. And for that reason, I think just going for the overbet shove here and potentially gaining value against worse queen X and some maybe like ace high flush draws is good here. I don't think we want to be checking here. He is going to have a few six X, but realistically not many six, seven, six, five and a six suited are the main ones I can think of. And I think a six suited often folds and four bits pre. So realistically, it's only like pocket nines. Um, a few 6x, but mostly going to have a lot of like king queen off, king queen suited, queen jack, queen 10 suited, as well as very high equity draws like ace x of hearts and jack 10 suited. So I think this does fine for the overbet. Um, obviously, not going to cash out and obviously going to hold. And I think this is a very decent spot to start to analyze his situation. His actually has a very, 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 very tough spot, I think, from what I first gathered there. Let's have a look, shall we? Obviously has to call the flop. I mean, I actually don't mind just, he can just raise the flop, but yeah, calling is perfectly reasonable. He's in position. You could argue against the big bet size. He shouldn't have a raising range, which I think is a perfectly reasonable way to look at this. And then, yeah, I mean, he's basically got a flush draw with an open ender. And this would be a spot where I'm not going to be using that large, fast um, play base sizing, you know, with a hand that doesn't need protection. That's a value bet. So, for example, if I have here like pocket nines, pocket queens, the odd quad combo of sixes. Um, I'm not going to use this over bet sizing with any of those types of hands that have his 10 eight of hearts drawing dead. Um, the reasoning for that is um, because my hands don't need protection and they don't want to overbet and fold out hands like Jack Tenor Clubs or a flush draw because they're drawing dead against a full house. So the only hands that really make sense here for me to shove, in my opinion, are going to be high equity draws that don't have showdown value that want to get better hands to fold. Um, and then some value hands that don't want to see a lot of scary rivers and don't want to check and give away um, cheap cheap turn cards, essentially. So, for example, when I've got ace-queen off without a heart, a villain is much more likely to have, you know, ace-jack, ace-ten of hearts, jack-ten suited, jack-ten of hearts. Um, I think, yeah, when he's got a hand like jack-ten suited, seven-eight suited, um, a smaller bet accomplishes more or even a check against an aggressive opponent because those hands haven't got chunks of equity against ace queen. However, when villain has, you know, ace, ace, jack, ace, 10, um, maybe eight and seven, but like ace five of hearts, ace four of hearts, ace three of hearts, ace 10 of hearts, ace jack of hearts, even king 10 and king jack of hearts, he's going to have a lot of the time um, live pair out, live gut shot like you've let's say villain's got king jack of hearts here he's going to be able to connect on a 10 to make the best hand a king to make the best hand a heart to make the best hand um if he's got a hand like seven eight of hearts he's got an open end of a flush draw if he's it's like so like and if he's even got like you know ace jack ace ten of hearts um he's got a flush draw so um 
I think that this hand specifically just does fine to sort of overbet value shove. And it's, it's not like a huge overbet, you know, it's 70 into 60. So it's what, like one point. It's not, it's, just, it's, it's literally just over hundred percent pot. So it's not massive. So I think this is fine. Um, if anything, you should argue that I should just pot the flop for that reason. It's because then that would mean I'd have about pot behind on the turn. Um, I think his hand just has to call, but then it, it's sort of grim because realistically, um, when I've got a hand like this, he does fine. But like, I'm often going to be doing this, you know, with, as I've said, a high equity, no showdown value hand. So when I have, you know, King Jack, King 10, Jack 10 of hearts, 10 eight of hearts, I actually can't have, I just realized, yeah, if he has 10 eight of hearts, I obviously can't have like Jack 10, King 10 of hearts. So I think his hand just has to go for the call call and hope that I have when he's got 10 eight of hearts. Hmm. Yeah, I think his, I think his call turn is um, pretty close, but I guess he's probably going to have enough equity against my entire range. He is basically calling off 70 to win 200. So if we literally just do the maths on that, 70 into 200, he needs to have 35% equity against my turn jamming range. And assuming his flush draw and, and like straight draw um, are going to be open ender, sorry, yeah, are going to be live, um, he's going to have enough equity. And in this situation, that's going to often depend on if his flush draws live, right? Because his straight draws like always going to be live because I don't have a full house. Like he can hit the jack, he can hit them, um, he can hit a jack here, he can hit um, um, ten nine, he can hit a seven. So he's always going to have what sixteen percent equity on the straight outs. Um, the question is, is his flush outs also live? Um, and the only way that this, therefore, in my opinion, really becomes a bad call is when the flush outs are not great. Um, but even in this instance, I believe he needed to have 35% and he actually only had, I believe he didn't even have that. If we can look at that together. I mean, assuming there are what 13, uh, 13, 12, 11 times two, 22, I believe he had about 30, somewhere between 30 and 35%, like 33%. So actually his hand is losing against ace queen and i haven't so when i have actually a hand here like king jack um of hearts or if i ever do this incorrectly which i doubt with ace x of hearts his um call is actually burning a lot of money so the only way realistically his hand starts to win is if um i, I honestly struggle to see his call winning i understand he has a flush draw and an open ender but the flush draw is often dominated and he realistically only has an open ender um and i can definitely have here in my opinion aces and kings for six, um, all combos um and the only other hands that he might i might have here is if I go sort of crazy with some kind of ace high flush draw of which case he's really screwed which I obviously don't see myself doing the only way his hand call starts to start you know doing better against my range is if I have in my range four five of hearts um but yeah, I, I, I sort of feel like I don't really have really much worse than a 10 high heart draw here that's a bluff. So sort of struggled to justify his call. Even if I go crazy, you know, with like jack 10 of clubs for the open ender, um, jack high beats 10 high, you know. Um, and actually now the pair outs like a 10 is bad for him um, because I would obviously make a 10 with a better kicker. We both have 10s and, oh no, we'd have 10s, sorry. The river came a 10 it would be like tens and sixes with the queen play so no kicker so overall i guess it's just pretty hard to fold an open end with the flush draw but i'd have to go pretty nuts here for him to justify the goal i think